Gil in Bradley Beach, New Jersey writes, Paul, I read and hear a lot about the degree to which many audiophiles avoid any form of compression when it comes to digital audio, MP3, MQA, AAC, etc. But my admittedly limited knowledge of the process of creating vinyl records tells me that due to the space restrictions in terms of the width of the grooves and the number of grooves that can fit on one side of a record, the audio on the master used for creating records is highly compressed, and the missing info is restored later via an internal or external phono stage or in the amp itself. At the risk of offending any vinyl purists, what, offending people? <laughs> You've come to the right place. Uh, this all sounds kind of sketchy to me. Am I completely wrong to think this way? You always have a very reasoned and enlightened perspective. Well, thank you. Not many people would agree with you on that, but I, I, I certainly try. Yes, you, you are incorrect. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, you asked. So, yeah, it, it's very different. If we look at digital audio compression, uh, MP3, let's just take MP3. MP3 is a compression technique that takes a big file size of music and narrows it down to a very small file size. And it does that by deleting actual information. And you wind up with less information than you started with. And they do it during times when they, they've done all these studies which show that as something gets loud and complex, we don't tend to hear all the stuff below. We kind of ignore it, so they just delete it. And well done, MP3, isn't bad. An example, Octave Rec uh, uh, Radio. If you go to Octave Radio, just go to octaverecords.com, scroll down the page, and you'll see a button, or even at the top of our website, it says Listen Live. Click, click that, that, that there, there you go, that's even easier. Top of the page, psaudio.com, click the top, Listen Live, that's Octave Radio, that's MP3. It's a high level of MP3, but it's still MP3, and it sounds terrific. Does it sound the same as the original Octave Record files played on this system? No, but it is more than listenable. It is actually really quite good. So, compression in digital audio, as you have described it, describes the elimination of musical information in order to make the file size smaller, okay? Now, compression on a turntable, on a vinyl record, that is kind of the same thing, but we're not losing anything other than the dynamic range, okay? So if we start with a recording of, with dynamic range like this, and a record only has the ability to reproduce dynamic range like this, we have to compress it. Now, we don't do that by deleting information. We do that by taking very soft passages and raising them up so that they fit within a smaller space. But they are all still there. And interestingly enough, the way that the compression works to bring the lowest sounds up and the highest sounds down just a smidge, and many times a good mastering engineer won't touch the top. He'll just bring the bottom up so that it'll fit within this more confined space. You actually wind up hearing more information because it's not lost and buried down into the weeds. So one of the issues that we have with digital audio, I mean, this system here is capable of 120 dB of dynamic range. Well. We can't hear 120 dB of dynamic range, right? I mean, this room probably has a noise floor of 35, 40 dB. So you're throwing that away right away. Anyway, I don't want to get off onto all that, but that's the difference. Compression in digital deletes stuff that's on there to make a smaller file. Unless, of course, we're talking about lossless compression like FLAC, uh, in which case, it does a whole different thing and you don't actually lose anything, but that's, that's for a whole nother discussion. And vinyl compression is more compressing the dynamic range and actually giving you almost more information because you can hear 
that which you probably couldn't have heard in the first place. Long-winded explanation, but there you are. Okay. Bye.